This is the Malay Peninsula, a narrow strip of land in Southeast Asia, separating the Indian Ocean from the Pacific. At Singapore, some of the world's busiest shipping lanes cross. Here also lie important rubber plantations and tin mines. The southern tip of the Malay Peninsula lies only 80 miles from the equator. In this equatorial zone, the climate is hot and humid with very little seasonal change and an almost daily rainfall. Nearly 80% of the total land area is covered with a dense equatorial rainforest. Malaya's 8 million people, therefore, live on only 20% of the land area. Though much of the forest is a barrier to transportation, some excellent roads run north and south through the country. Today, some of the forest has been cleared and put to commercial use. Less than years ago, rubber trees were brought to Malaya from Brazil. In this short time, Malaya has become one of the world's leading producers of rubber. Many rubber estates are owned by British firms because until recently, Malaya was governed by Britain. These are Tamil women from southern India. Each of the thousands of trees must be tended daily, thus providing employment for people from overpopulated neighboring countries. Each morning, the women receive their instructions from the manager, who is also an Indian. Armed with buckets, they set off to their assigned sections of the plantation. The rubber tapper carefully scrapes the bark of each tree. If cut too deeply, the tree could be damaged and its yield reduced. By removing a thin slice of bark, the rubber sap, or latex, is made to flow along the downward cut. From the liquid latex, crude rubber will be made. Out of each cut, the tree will drip for several hours into the collecting cup. The latex from many trees is collected in buckets shortly after noon each day. In the afternoon, the tappers carry the latex to collecting stations scattered throughout the plantation. Here, the buckets are weighed. An inspector takes a sample of latex from each bucket to test it for purity. When the measuring instrument floats high in the liquid, the inspector knows that the latex is pure. Each worker is paid according to the amount of latex she has delivered. Many of the women are children and grandchildren of rubber workers who emigrated from India when the rubber boom started. On some plantations, the latex is chemically treated and turned into sheets of crude rubber. This plantation sends its latex by rail to a processing plant further south. The manager of a rubber plantation is responsible for securing the highest possible yield from his trees. He has been trained to recognize when a tree is old enough to be tapped and when too old to be worth tapping. He also supervises the planting of new growth. The manager's brother works on a nearby tin mine. Malaya has some of the world's most important tin mines.
This is known as an open cast mine because the ore is dug from the surface of the ground. Modern machinery, usually imported from Great Britain, and the most up-to-date mining methods are used. This conveyor belt carries the ore-bearing earth out of the pit. Because of the extreme heat, the miners here work in four-hour shifts. The conveyor belt transports thousands of tons of earth daily. But the giant shovels are capable of digging more earth than the conveyor can carry away, the surplus earth being loaded into railway trucks. Trucks are pulled up the steep incline by means of a chain and winch. At the top is the processing station, which separates the tin ore from clay, earth, and other impurities. In these huge beaters, water is mixed with the earth. The ore is much heavier than the impurities and won't dissolve in water. It therefore sinks to the bottom of the beater while the impurities are washed away. Great quantities of water are required in the processing of tin ore. Again and again the earth is mixed with water. Each successive wash removes more impurities until gradually the water becomes cleaner and only the metallic grains of pure ore remain. At the smelter, the ore is further refined. Ships carry the ore from the mines to the smelter on the island of Paolo Brani. Tin ore is heavy. Each sack weighs over a hundred pounds. The ore is very valuable since tons of earth must be processed to fill just one sack. In the smelter, the ore is refined or purified by a process of melting. After several days, it is opened or tapped. The molten tin runs into a bed of sand moulds where the metal will harden. The resulting ingots are over 99% pure tin, but pure tin is never used. It is processed with other metals to produce the alloys needed by the industrial world. Malaya exports one-third of the world's supply of tin. Ships which receive the tin ingots here at the port of Singapore will carry them to mills and factories in Europe and America. The island of Singapore is connected by a causeway with the Malay Peninsula. The island is situated on the narrow straits of Malacca between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Because of its strategic position, ships of many flags always fill the harbour of Singapore. Here they refuel and here they bring the products of their native countries.
Singapore's tall, modern buildings reflect the prosperity which international commerce has brought to the island. These large buildings house the offices and banks that make Singapore the financial hub of Southeast Asia. English and Chinese are the main languages and the signs are in both languages. Chinese firms control much of the commerce of the island whose population is over half Chinese. Indians make up another large group, the rest of the population being Malays who work mainly as fishermen or farmers. This is a market in the Chinese sector. The merchants sell just enough fish each day to make a small profit and to buy vegetables and rice. Fish, vegetables and rice form the diet of the Chinese. Even the fruit market is international. These oranges came from California. Malaya is a federation of different peoples living on the peninsula and on the island of Singapore. Combining the different peoples into a unified whole presents a problem. But with the wealth of the rubber forests, tin mines and shipping, this problem may be resolved.